Multiplication is known as repeated addition. For example, when I have 3 times 2, 3 times I'm going to have groups of 2. That happened 3 times, so how many are there total? Well, if there's 2 in each group and I add them together, there are 6 total. Now, if you notice, we've moved to a different sign, and we're going to do that in algebra so that this x, shown here in the first problem, doesn't confuse us with the variable x. We're going to switch it to a dot. So let's try the next one. Three times, I'm going to have groups of negative 2. So three times, I'm going to have groups of negative 2. So we've already looked at addition of negative numbers, adding negative numbers. And when I add those, I get negative 6. So when I multiply by a negative, my answer turns out to be negative. In the next example, the negative comes first and then the positive. So can I have negative two groups of three? That doesn't make sense. There's a property that allows me to change the order, and it's called the commutative property. If I take four times two, I get eight. And if I take two times four, I get eight. So what I, it's allowed me to do, this commutative property, is switch the order. So that's what I'm going to do when I see negative 2 times 3. I'm going to switch that order, and now it looks like the problem above, 3 groups of negative 2, is negative 6. In the last problem, to find the answer in the last problem, because I can't have negative 3 groups of negative 2, I'm going to look at a pattern. And my pattern's going to be, again, with negative 3 times 2. I know that is negative 6. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. And you see the pattern? I am adding 3 each time. So when I multiply by negative 1, if a pattern follows, I'm going to be adding 3 each time. So if you notice, the two negatives, the negative 3 and the negative 1, produced a positive result. So when I multiply negative 3 times negative 2, I get a positive 6. So in summary, a positive times a positive is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a positive is also a negative because of the commutative property. And then the last one, a negative times a negative is a positive. Division of integers? Well, division is just the reverse of multiplication. So you're going to see that the same properties of multiplication hold for division. Division is groups of things. So if I have six items and I'm going to divide them into two groups, I'm going to get three per group. Six divided by two is a positive three. If I have negative six items and I want them in two groups, so I might be in the whole $6. I'm going to divide it into two groups. I again get three per group, but they are now negative. So negative 6 divided by a positive 2 is a negative 3. Now when I switch the order, division is not commutative. So when I look at this, I'm going to reverse it and use multiplication. I'm asking myself, what number multiplied by negative 2 is going to give me a positive 6? Using my multiplication rules, that turns out to be negative 3. So 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Reversing it backwards, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. I'm going to do that to show the last one as well. I'm asking myself, what number times negative 2 is going to give me negative 6. And it looks like that number needs to be positive 3. So if you look for the rules at both multiplication and division, when you're given two negatives and you're dividing or multiplying, your answer is positive. When one of the signs is negative, my answer is negative. Again, one of the signs is negative, my answer is negative. And when both signs are positive, my answer is positive. So a positive divided by a positive is a positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. A positive divided by a negative 
is a negative. And lastly, a negative divided by a negative is a positive.